It's the 6th day of May, Tuesday morning. Yesterday was a bank holiday. It's a good day. Not that terribly warm, but it's a good day here in rural Ireland. Now, I've loaded up two videos about Coom Echo Wind Farm in County Cork. And I showed it to you particularly because it's one I never looked at before. So the pattern I've looked at over the years is that all of these are insolvent and are being bailed out by parent companies who ultimately load the cost on the Irish bill pair. Now, you can work out Ireland's situation. According to the internet there now, and it used to be, I checked it years ago, it was 4,000 megawatts of installed capacity of wind, and it now gives it as 4,800. Uh, and that would be right because it's grown up a good while. That's maybe six years ago. So there would be eight hundred megawatts installed since then now that means that there are currently eight four thousand eight hundred megawatts of installed capacity in the republic of ireland okay now the cost of that was about 2008 when kumako wind farm was built was around the two million per megawatt Ra Ra is a 12 megawatt one and it's 30 million was the advertised cost. But then the costs have gone up since then. So I'll just give you exactly how you can do the figures. In, two, in 2008, it'd be about 2,000, 2 million, meg, 2 million euros per megawatt. And I'd say now it's 3 million euros at least. So a wind farm built in 2015 would be about 2.2. 2.4 so you can average it out whichever way you like i'll just pick a ballpark figure if that's all right 2.4 million average of all the wind farms in the country now none of these have ever repaid their capital costs except it's done so by a parent company such as the national toll roads green coat renewables or uh, ssc electricity or the esb none of them ever paid the capital sum the cost the basic cost they paid the interest all right and most of them borrow bonded money off the markets and how they're going to pay back i don't know but it's clear anyway that the intention is to levy it on you and i and there are 2.2 million users of electricity accounts in the republic of ireland so all you have to do is take the total installed capacity, 4,800, and don't use points, put in the knots. With a smartphone, you have a calculator there. So 4,000, 4, 8, not, 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 4,800 megawatts. Wait, now go back on that again. 4, comma, 8, not, not. No, that's it. 4,800, 4, 8, not, not. That's the installed capacity in megawatts. Okay. Now, you multiply that by whichever figure you think is right. I'm going for 2.4 million because earlier ones would be two and later ones would be more. So it's between two and three. So multiply it by that and you get a figure. That's the total cost of the wind farms in Ireland. Now, none of them have been paid back their capital cost in reality because they can't. Because the income they get in, less the expenses they pay out, including interest on their loans, does not leave enough to pay off any of the capital cost. They do depreciate them in their balance sheet, in their balance sheet and their profit in their balance sheet. Yes, but the, the money's not paid off. It's just left there owed. So in the case of Comaco, one Comaccio, the SSC gives them a, two, a 20 million grant. They hand them a 20 million check to cover the fact that they can't pay off the capital costs. So now 4,800 4, megawatts multiplied by my figure of 2.4 million per, per uh, megawatt gives you a figure something around, something around 9 billion. And divide that by the number of bill pairs, which is 2.2, as I get. It might be a little more. You might be better go 2.24 or something. Million. 2,240,000, 2, we'll say. 2.4 or 2.5 million bill pairs. And just divide 2.5 into the total uh, value of the existing wind farms, and you get what each one of us has to pay. 
and it's around four it's around four thousand nine hundred each that we'd have to pay now of course they could take it off us in bits and pieces here and there but the older wind farms will have to be paid quite soon. Now, if you go for Michal Martin's beloved offshore wind capacity, we said to build a thousand offshore. The cost there would be around five, five thousand, five, five million per, per turbine, and there'd be extra costs. So I'd say an offshore wind farm, make it up yourself, it'd be five and a half million per megawatt. Offshore now, it would be more expensive. So if you add on a thousand, we'll say they get building a thousand, you just simply uh, multiply it by the cost, we'll say for, for one thousand by five and a half million, what would that be? Five and a half billion, would it? One thousand by five and a half million per megawatt. And then you get a figure and divide it by the number of bill pairs is 2.2 2 or 2.3, whichever you like to go for. That's all you have to do. You don't do anything else. And that'll show, show you what we have to pay. And I figure out there we'd have to pay around each each bill player six thousand at least a piece to pay them off. Now some of the new ones would be paid off over a period. So there's six bills a year. So each of us will have to pay, we'll say we'll say we have to pay five and a half thousand. It's a it's a fierce it's a frightening sum. So it's only common sense that those who benefit in the, for the electricity will have to pay for it, and that's us. There's nobody else paying for it. But now you have one quarter of all bill pairs in arrears, so how are you going to screw 6,000 ahead from them? Some of these people are running flats. It could be a flat in Dublin with four flats in it. Some of these people are running flats. So, some of them, some people are old age pensioners. Some then don't get, some get relief off their electricity bill because they're over a certain age. So what's the ordinary married couple going to do? What's the ordinary single mum going to do? She has to pay that money, 6000 Now, you can check it out yourself and definitely don't be afraid to contradict me because I'm standing here in the yard and I don't have my computer or calculator here, but I've figured it out there. You want to add the whole lot up for the moment. It's 4,800 multiplied by the cost of about two, two and a half million per megawatt and divide that by the number of bill pairs, which is 2.3, we'll say. 2.2 .2 is what it gives. Could be 2.3. There might be a few extra. And that's everybody, everybody paying. So how are they going to recoup that money? You see what I mean? And you can do your figures on the back of a piece of paper there. Use your phone to give you the figures. Now you can add, say that, oh, well, the new onshore, offshore wind, sure, it'll be 20 years up there. So you can divide it by, you can divide it by 20 years. It's not much. It's a lot of infrastructure and you have to pay for all the existing generation as well. And so when they get this all done, we need, we need it before we started building the data centers. We needed 6,000 megawatts of generating capacity. And the aim in, in the 2000 and 10 report was that we'd have um, 15,000. So that's that's two and a half times what we need. And definitely we'll get there. So we're going to be paying off the capital cost and the running cost of three times the generating capacity we need. All the plant, all the equipment, it has to be paid for. Whoever builds it has to get the money back and there is only one source of income. And that is the, and that is the electricity bill. And we're getting, I'm getting reports of people it's just becoming impossible. So it seems to be that government's policy is, and they're already telling business, get your own generating plant. And after the storm this year, some people have got their own generating plant. And there's going to be a lot of noise from these. If you're a next door neighbor, you're living in a housing estate, and your next door neighbor is running a diesel generator, you're going to have terrible noise. They're going to have social problems over this. Moreover, keeping the generators awkward and you have to fill it up and the diesel will run out someday on the floor or something and you'll have oil and you have all of that stuff and you have the fumes and everything. So we're building three times the capacity we need and we're still going to be generating our own with diesel generators. And they're actually trying to do deals with companies that they can, in emergencies, pump electricity back into the grid. What does this spell to you? 
To me, it spells mayhem, utter mayhem. And I, anyone that wants to check it, just check the SCA directive. 2001 ec Article 32, all public plans and programmes must be assessed from an engineering and environmental standpoint. So they built all this wind and solar, and they never looked at what it involves. And the blackouts in Spain is now slowly but surely their efforts to deceive the people into taking, thinking it was something to do with the weather has failed. And everyone now knows what actually really happened was the frequency went bowways because there was too much wind and solar on the system. And we're building more and more. Right, folks, that'll do. I think I'll give that one a miss. I'll maybe go another week and I might look. I want to look at Sleeve Bond. I, I looked at it years ago. But the thing about Kumacho, I never looked at it before. Whatever the way you pronounce it. It's a new one to me. And there you are. They're getting bailouts of 20 million in the first set of accounts I look at. The first two years, recent years, 20 million paid by SSC Electricity who borrowed from the markets. And that's where I reckon if there's a financial collapse, that's where it'll come from. There'd have been a financial collapse long ago only for their printed money. But I reckon that's where it'll come because the lenders that lend, loaned it to SEA and Green Coat Renewables, when they come to get their money back, where are they going to get it? If they're bailing out all these wind farms, where are they going to get it? And don't forget, they have to keep all the traditional capacity running. And what you're seeing now with the Spanish thing, it's not to say, oh, we got it wrong. Oh, we have to install more. That'll be the way it'll go. And they'll say, oh, we have to triple the strength of the grid. We'll have to put up pylons beside the pylons already there because the French uh, uh, nuclear grid wasn't fit to keep the Spanish one running. It was just too big of a load to keep the, the frequency right. But that's what they'll do. They'll try to invest more. And these are the same people in the EU who want to go to war against Russia. Huh? We're dealing with some Balubas, some Balubas and our own people here, and all that's going on still back the traditional political parties. So I don't know, can we change it from Ireland? I doubt it. The people I know in Ireland will not change, but it's changing elsewhere. We'll see you back soon. Good luck. Thank you.